Welcome to Thinking Tackle. My name's Danny Fairbrass and we're here at the Linear Complex. This time we're on Smith's Hardwick Lake. We've managed to secure the end of a spit and the fish are right in there. They're showing all over the end. No one can get to us and I've got a fantastic angler to fish with. His name's Simon Scott. He's part man, part carp and he's a master at fishing up close and personal. So we're going to get round there, see the kit he's going to use and try and catch one from right under our feet. Hello, Mr. Scott. Hello, Dan. How are you doing? Hiya. Very well, thank you. Good, good. Trickery? Yep, I think uh, it's a sort of get started rig. We'll yeah. see. We probably have to fine tune. Normally, these sorts of venues rely on. You know, it's very pressured, isn't it? Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of people here already. and uh, But I promise you, up there, because no one can get to it, mate, it is black with them. Not putting any pressure I've on. heard that before, Dan. <laughs> He's black with carp. They're but, everywhere. Mate, it, re it really is. It's, it's so obvious that there's no lines in that area and all the fish have just migrated into it. Brilliant. And it's the cut through between both lakes and yeah. they want to be there anyway. But yeah. um, I, think we'll, I think we'll get a chance quite quickly. So show us what you're going to put out there, Good, Well, as I say, this is my sort of starting point. Um, right. And it's a rig I would use in a lot of situations. Just hold that up. Um, it, it's sort of on the, basically on the snowman setup. So you've got a, a hardened hook bait there and uh, a little... Uh, critically balanced pop up on the top uh, and what I'm trying to do is to get that rig to sit not right. like that right, it's okay. too obvious right, so it on. needs to be down and I want that literally sat like that okay. so that right. pop up takes a bit of the weight off it, and as the fish sucks it up the hook goes straight into the prone position on the lip right uh, a little bit of shot uh, sorry putty on the on the hook link there just to nail that down right nice and short I haven't I haven't seen the spot yet so right. I don't know if it's going to be clean gravel a bit of weed I, so I don't know what the bottom's like either but I promise it's you black with carp. Mate, I got here yesterday <laughs> and I probably had to sit on my hands to not fish there um, but it was smoking up and they were bow waving there are there were swans picking something up off the bottom little bits of weed yeah very very close to the reeds but probably a rod length out they couldn't touch the bottom and it was smoking up so it's got to be it's got to be fairly clear out there yeah good. well right. this would be a good starting point and I might right. fish it with a little stick or a little bag on right. um, and just keep it like that to start with if the fish are there you know let's not go spotting or right you know, put absolutely out right well you said like, not much commotion but look at that that's a sizable lead it is. to be fishing really I, I, that surprises me that you'd have something well, on as big as that I, I, again without seeing the spot I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to get if I'm lowering it from a rod tip then that's what I use if right. I'm going to be under arm casting I'll go lighter than that right okay um, but if I'm going to put a little trap right in the edge then I want a, I want a house prick on right, the end okay. because if that fish picks the rig up bang I want the hook point in okay um, so I tend to use quite big big leads you know and, and I'm not casting them I'm not crashing them in on the fish yep. so uh, it's lowering yeah. them in and on the back of it there I see no tubing or anything no tubing because I'm the chances are I'm going to be back winding this onto a spot and then right. Okay. Partly out of the way, so as subtle as possible. Um, I might, uh, depending on the substrate, go on an inline lead. Right. But as a starter, not knowing the bottom, if it's a bit soft, I, I want the you know some more traditional style. Yep. Um, a lead clip. These are fantastic. Really good bits of kit. The beauty of this is leads in my pocket while I'm walking around, so they're not clanging around on the rods. That can be hooked up on the eyes. Yep. Get to the fishing situation. I might have two or three different leads, or it's a little bit bit further out put a slightly smaller lead on and cast it yep. it's right under the tip I can put a big old brick on um, and then up the line several beads of putty just to pin everything down right um, and keep it out of the way and I'm hopefully fish relatively slack and let the leads do the work cool so okay all right well I'll, I'll go starter. and tie up something similar to that based on uh, what you've just said there I'll, I had a two ounce lead on so I'm going to put a much heavier one on and um, <laughs> get something together and then we'll creep up there together okay I'm looking forward to seeing it cool. see you in a minute, See you in a minute. First things first, off with the glasses and on with the uh, prescription Polaroids. Essential kit when you're stalking or floater fishing, pretty much whenever you're fishing at all to be honest, cuts out the glare and you can see far more with these. Now to talk to you about the rig, I've changed it slightly since uh, speaking to Simon. So basically from the, from the hook bait down, I've got a little tiny pink hook bait that's going to hover just above the bottom there so the, the hook will be laying flat and the bait will be just above and then a mono hook link with a little tiny bit of putty in the middle and then a heavier lead I had a two ounce lead on this is a three and a half and it's a cog lead so it's a center of gravity picking up the lead from the center of gravity that, that's really going to shock the fish and it's on a lead clip so hopefully it will bust off of that lead clip and leave us with no lead on the line at all I've taken off my tubing and put little tiny blobs of putty just like Simon just to hold everything down on the bottom because when those fish are in there you don't want their fins touching the line so that's the rig 
Um, unfortunately, I haven't got any stalking rods, so I'm using a 12 foot, three and a half pound test curve rod and a long distance casting reel loaded with 15 pound fast sinking line, so that should be okay. I'll just have to be a bit careful if I hook one, so I'm gonna get down there and do it now. Believe me, yesterday. You you're not, Dan, you're no, not going to give no, me the. No, you honestly, should have been here yesterday. No, we story. should have been here yesterday. Oh, it's tough. It <laughs> but um, you, could, you couldn't see the bottom, this whole bit, and it just erupted. And when I walked up here, it just erupted and they're all up on the surface. Wow. What do you think but, has changed today then? Why are they not? I don't know. There's obviously a couple here. You're the professor, you tell me. Well, they've moved. <laughs> but um, yeah, there's one. There's one. Yeah, there's definitely there's a few one coming. Look, see, yeah, yeah, see yeah. him, see him. And I'd, I'd, yeah, there's a bit of smoke yeah. up there, isn't there? No, no, that's weed. Is it? Okay, yeah, that's, that's a band of weed. That's a band of weed which we couldn't see yesterday. So, that's. But I think if we can try, try and fish the inside it. Yeah, yeah. You know, literally. But they are coming. I've had the odd look this morning, and they are coming right in and round this corner here. Oh, so this lovely swim, isn't it? Yeah. So now, now the fish are not, not smoking it up, not going crazy. W would you put bait in now? Or, or would you just put a rig in? What? I would, uh, it's very, you can blow a chance very easy in my experience. Right. There's obviously fish here. Yep. Um, I would, you know, just like to have a little look round and try and get a bit of a lay of the land, see where the fish are moving. Now that we can, if it was all chocolate brown, it's very difficult to do that. Yeah. I haven't stood in this one before, so I don't know the, what the bottom's like. So I might use this opportunity to try and just get a bit of an idea of what's going on. Yep. Maybe then think about putting a bit of bait in one or two spots and just sitting back. There are obviously fish here. Yeah. Um, you know, it's so tempting to arrive and go, right, they're here and just whack a lead out. But I think you can blow it quite quick. So. Right, okay. And we want to try and catch one stalking style rather than out in the pond, don't we? Yes, so, yeah. And then maybe look at putting a bit of bait in on the corners you know, just, and just watch what the fish are up to. And when, when you put bait in, will you, will you typically put it away from an opening or doesn't it matter? I, I just try and watch what the fish are doing. I normally they show you the spot. If right, you see okay. one tip on a spot, then that's where they want it. Right. So that's if, obviously but brilliant. If we're not seeing fish actually coming through and you've got to put some bait in to make it happen, where, where, where would the bit be the bits that you choose to I'd put it in? Try and pick the slightly less obvious spot right in right. the front. And also think about how you're going to get a rig in. Right, OK. Because if you go, right, I want it here, and you put a load of bait in there, how are you going to get a rig on that if there's fish feeding on it? And a lot of the fish I catch stalking, I'm putting a rig amongst feeding fish, so you need, right. a, you need a bit of bankside cover, you need to put a creep in and go, right, okay. go trapping. Right, okay, okay. That's a lovely spot. I think I might go and get a little bit of bait down and just put a bit of bait in a couple of spots and then just watch for a while and see what's going on. Right, I'll stay here, you do that, and then okay. I'll watch what you're doing. I've seen you uh, put something off the side. I see what you mean about somewhere you can approach carefully yeah. and donking the lead in first and just making sure it's a bit it's firm and it's not too weedy. Yeah, there's a bit of weed there, Dan. As I say, the, the spot I've picked, it, it, it's off the back of that weed, there's a hard run of gravel. And right. I, I could see it, it was looked like gravel, but I just wanted to check because I don't want to get 10 fish feeding there and plop a rod in and it's all weedy. And it's all weedy. So that's my trap. It's worth pointing out as well, you wouldn't see it without these on, would you? Oh, no. The, the bits of essential kit. Yeah. Polarised. Uh, you know, there's no point in going without them. Yeah. At this time of year. So you put you put a few crumbed up boilies I saw in there. Yeah, a so bit of pellet. Yeah, a bit of pellet. Uh, a few there's um, yeah mainly boilies broken up and some pellet. I, I mean I'm, I've got particles as well. I've got tigers, um, some, some nice sort of salted chili hemp as well. Right. But I start with boilies and pellets, and I'll, you know it's important to ring the changes. Be prepared to chop and change. Right. You know if this is my first trip here. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what's working, what's not. So I brought several different things, and it may be that they want hemp and tigers, and maybe they want pellet and boilies. Right. And but so we, the fish will tell us that if nothing's going over the area, yeah. then you change the food. Yeah, chop and change. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, look, this is what I'm going to start with. It smells fantastic. Yeah. So that's just chopped and whole boily, a few yeah. crumbed up boilies, yeah. bit of sweet corn, yeah. just frozen stuff straight yeah. out of the bag. Oh, perfect. Um, how much would you say to put in? Because we've got a nice little glowing 
area yeah, down there. You've got there. a lovely little strip there. I mean, it may seem a bit obvious right on the swim, but we've seen fish coming around here, so yep. it, it looks like a good spot. I, I wouldn't go too mad, because it's, right. it's, it's already warm today. It's going to be a hot day. Not the whole bucket then, though. No? no, I'd resist that. I mean, it, but it might work some days. You know, <laughs> no, I'm joking. But I'm I, joking. I'd be tempted to put, you know, maybe a scoopful in and, and just dot it down the line. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you only get one or two fish going, you yeah. don't want to try and catch one of them. Yeah. If you get 20 fish going, then happy days. You put the whole lot in, but... Oh, sorry. One thing to point out now, Dan, yeah. is while it's nice and clearish on this spot and you can see the bottom, yep. think about where you want your rig to go in yep. now, yep. in your mind's eye. Now, one thing I've noticed here is there is a little stick or a bit of weed coming up from left to right off yep. the bottom. Yep. If you put your rig from here and you lay your line over that, you're going to get a really poor line lay. Yep. So I always like to think, well, there's no fish in the swim, right? When, when there are, how yep. am I going to set the trap in here? Yep. And a so look, swing it out and then the line yeah, just around. Well, think where you're going to put it so yeah. that you can get your line laid right. So yep. a bit of putty on the line and then yep. lay the line to the side here. It's not going to get caught over that. Sure. And make like, sure that the bait is beyond your line, yeah. not on your line. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to move forward a little bit okay, just to get this. it away. Dan, there's a fish coming in on the right there. Look. Whereabouts? A bit further out. We're being watched. <laughs> that enough, do you think? Yeah. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Well done. It's actually another, if you look, there's a there's a gravelly spot there, yeah. I think. Yeah. And there's another one there. Right. And we'll see how that goes. That's yep. you know, you don't want to go mad now and bait ten spots here because you'll no. end up. You'll have it, they'll be feeding everywhere. Yeah, but that's worth remembering. And yes. If that's clean as it looks, yes. it might be, then that's yeah. a good spot as well. Right, OK. But there's a few fish about right now. We just back out and let them get on with it for a right. bit. Right, OK, Go cool. and bait some other spots, perhaps. Cool. What I want to do now is just run you through a couple of margin baiting options. The first one uh, is based around pellet. What I do is I start off with a combination of carp pellet and trout pellet mixed together. These are in uh, two different sizes, so you've got a four and a half mil pellet in there and some six mil uh, trout pellets and some six mil coarse fish pellets. So that's the base to my uh, pellet mix. To that then, I add some kingfish breakdown pellets. These are absolutely fantastic. Fish meal based pellets, a bit of oil in there. I add them into the bucket and I maybe sort of uh, put about 25% of the mix will be based on those, so I tip them in. To that I then add some Atlantic heat pellets. Again, these are rapid breakdown pellets. Loads and loads of smell comes off of these. Um, so I'm, I'm really just making a nice mixture of different pellets, They're all breaking down at different times uh, on the lake bed, trying to create a, 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 a a collage of different smells in the water column. So I'll mix them together and you can see already there we've got nice colour combination, uh, light brown, dark brown and, and some reddish pellets. And then to top that off, I then use some boilies. Um, now I don't want to use whole boilies, particularly in the margins, so I often break these up. I'll crumb them up. Some I'll crumb right up to powder. Um, some I just squeeze flat, so a, a bit of a mixture. So we'll put those in uh, and maybe 50 or 60 baits broken up. Um, I'm trying to get a bite. I'm not pre-baiting particularly in this situation, so um, I don't want to put loads and loads on each spot. So we'll crumb those up, add them to the bucket, give it a bit of a mix up. Now in terms of hook baits over that, I, I would favour using uh, my sort of snowman balanced at bottom bait pop-up combination. Um, but you've got options there, so you could use maybe a, a little drill pellet on the hair, but you can see that's a real different mixture there, all sorts of stuff in there. Loads of smell coming up off the bottom. Some of the pellets are going to break down relatively quickly, so there's all sorts of flavours and size combinations, hopefully making it tricky for the fish. So that's my first option. That's caught me loads and loads of fish down the years. My second option is a bit different. Um, some waters particles just seem to do better. I can think of one or two lakes that I fish where boilies and pellets just don't score, particularly in the heat of the summer. Um, now, my number one bait for the rest of my life, if I had no other options, would be tiger nuts. Um, these are um, nice sweet tiger nuts. Uh, I purchased them in a jar ready cooked and these are absolutely fantastic. And the combination with tigers and hemp is, is just an all time carp classic. Um, there isn't a carp swimming that doesn't eat hemp and tigers. The beautiful thing about this combination is that carp adore hemp 
uh, and tiger nuts have got the longevity. Rudd and roach can't eat them, tench find them too hard. So nice big tiger nut drilled out on the air. He's gonna you know, put that on your spot and you know it's gonna stay there for, the, for you know, several hours or maybe 24 hours or more. Um, so hemp and tigers is a great combination. So I will chop and change. And on a lake like this that I'm not that familiar with, I might try baiting a few spots with pellet and a few spots with a hemp and tigers combination. And in my experience, one or the other will definitely turn the carp on. So fingers crossed we catch a few. Okay, so here we are at the western end of Smith's Lake. Um, this afternoon, it's been really warm and uh, the sun's obviously brought the fish up in the water and uh, a couple of hours ago I had a little creep about over there and introduced a few floating baits. Um, a bit speculative, I'm not the world's best floater angler but I thought I'd have a go. I'm going to have one or two fish coming up and taking them. The gulls have been a bit problematic. Um, every time we get a nice drift of mixes coming down on the breeze, the gulls are coming but we've had a few fish taken. Um, while I was over there, I had the float rod with me, I had a few casts around, and I definitely had a couple of swells at the, at the, the fake mixer that I'm using as a hook bait, and I thought, here we go. Um, there's also a big group of fish sitting up between this snag and the reeds here, and, uh, and this swim became available, and I was, I was aware that as those fish moved out, there was a chance, there was a bit of a concentration build up here, so I've come down here and put a few mixes out, and fingers crossed in the next hour I might get a chance. Well, that's me, I reckon, for now. I'm oven roasted. Sun on my back for the last hour or two, I'm cooked. Um, although there are definitely a few fish here, I've not had any chances. I had a couple come up and take mixes, but problems with birds, and uh, they're, just, they're not really into it. And uh, I think I'm going to call it a day here and, and go off and have a little wander around, see what else I can find. Well, a bit frustrating, and uh, we moved down here yesterday afternoon, it was obvious there was fish here, with the congregation down to my left. I was thinking in sort of what would happen to those fish during the night, I thought they might move out of this bay to some extent, and I got that right. Um, so first light this morning, it was really quiet in front of me here, uh, sort of between four and five, but 5.30, five six o'clock this morning, fish started bubbling, and seeing a few, and nothing happening on the rods. And I'd seen a fish bubbling up, um, and then one head and shoulder, it might have been a group of fish. So I reeled in one of my rods and put on a little white um, pop-up, real smelly uh, sent from hell crab pop-up, really good bait uh, to fish as a single and lined up, put it out on the spot, the fish were bubbling and um, I'd only just sat back on the bed chair and the rod wrapped round and we were away and unfortunately after about 30 seconds it come off. So uh, Simon Scott's dodgy rigs I guess, so a bit frustrating. Um, but obviously there's fish here, they're certainly seeing a few showing, a few bubbling. I get the feeling the fish are feeding in the natural natural food that's out there, uh, in amongst the uh, blanket weed on the bottom. When I've been reeling in, I've been bringing in this stuff, uh, which is blanket weed. Um, it can be a bit of a headache for presentation point of view, um, but it harbours loads of natural food. So in this stuff, this will be coated in the bottom like candy floss, you're going to get shrimps, uh, snails, bloodworm, all living in there. And the fish are more than happy to feed in it. Um, so I'm not too worried about bringing this in on my leads, um, but I've extended my hook links a tiny bit just to make sure that I'm fishing up on top of it rather than punching into it. Um, so we'll see, hopefully, um, in the next hour or two, I think we're sort of right in the bang in the middle of bank bite time now. We've got a really good chance, so fingers crossed. Okay, so uh, I'm in, <laughs> yes. Um, whoa, a powerful fish, this one. Uh, I'm, I've uh, been in that previous swim for a while and it was just not looking good. Just had that feel that it wasn't gonna happen and uh, I was getting itchy feet and uh, just come over the back of the bank here and had a little look into Harwick and, uh, and there's fish showing 20 yards out. Whoa. And uh, I was saw sort of, well, I can't miss an opportunity like that, so I reeled in quick, got round here with a couple of rods on the gravel, just plonked them down, flicked them out, and uh, they've only been in the water 10 minutes, and uh, we've got one on. So fingers crossed, I'll land this one. Whoa! It's going really well. I see the lead's definitely dropped off. That's perfect. I'm a great advocate of uh, this system. 
with the lead clip and losing the lead. The lead, you know, it, it's, you just do not want a lead on there during a fight, uh, particularly in this weedy water. You can see there's weed hanging off that line now, like, like you know, washing. And uh, that's going to get in the way if you've got a lead in there. Yes, excellent, fantastic. It's a cracking fish, beautiful, beautiful scaly mirror. Really pleased with that. Wow, what an absolute cracker. A smashing Smith Hardwick mid-double, really, really pleased with that one. Not only is it absolutely a beautiful fish, but uh, Dan and I have moved about a fair bit. We've been chopping and changing techniques, chasing the fish round. They've been really mobile, and we've tried to be really mobile. And this time, we've actually caught up with them, got the rods in the right spot at the right time, and away it rattled. So really pleased with that. And uh, I think it's time to get this one back and go catch a bigger one. Well, it's time to move again. Um, I came and had a look at this area this morning. It's the one I baited up. Um, yesterday and uh, there was clearly signs of fish out there there's a little bit of slick coming off my bait and I saw a fish show long of it and short of it as well and um, it just seemed too good an opportunity to ignore so got my gear together came round here for a couple of hours just put two rods out I'm using the marker pole so I knew it was 16 and three quarter rod lengths to get out there so round them dink dink two rods on the spot as quietly as I possibly could um, and as you can see now it's got really warm the wind's gone off the water and they're not really showing or anything anymore. So um, Simon's come round and said basically the fish that were in front of me yesterday have turned up again in that very, very shallow water. So they're properly leading me a merry dance here. I'm backwards and forwards between the swims, but I really want to catch one. So I'll get back round there and I'll put rods right up against the edge in about that much water. So this is the bit of trickery that's going out there. It's absolutely black with fish all up and down the margin. And I'm gonna bait up with half bait. So basically I've got two baits joined together there. I've got half a pop up and half a bottom bait. So the rig resets itself and always sits over the same way. But on the top of it, I've shaved it off again to make it look like a half bait just sitting there like all the ones I've fed. It's a fluorocarbon hook link fish D-rig style. I've got a camouflage hook on as well and a little bit of putty to hold it all flat down on the bottom and then that lead system that picks the lead up from the very centre. So it's only a two ounce lead. There's loads of fish out there. I don't want to scare them away but the fish are going to have to pick that up from the centre and that is going to hook them. And then we've got a bit of tubing attached to a lead clip just to stop the whole lot from tangling when it goes out there. So that's that one. I'm going to put a pink hook bait on the other rod, scatter a few chops up and down the margin and see which one goes first. Yes! And we are into a fish off the far margin. It's properly going. God, mate, look at this taking line. He's not happy carp, this at all. God, mate, look at this. Got to have taken 30, 40, 50 yards of line, this. Come on, come to Papa. Taking floaters out in front of me as well, look. <laughs> Be good to me. Be good to me. 
Are you good to me? Come on, get in the net. Get in the net. Yes, got him, come on. Oh man, that is wicked. Oh man, I'm so pleased, I'm over the moon. It's a lovely calf as well. Look at that. How about that for a beautiful carp? 21 pounds, 12 ounces, absolutely over the moon to get this one. Loads of moving, loads of effort, loads of missing it by just enough. And then we get one of these. Top, top result, well chuffed. Come on, get away from it. That's it, it's kicking out now. Ah, oh, you That's mad, he came in really quickly and now he's zoomed back out again. It was a common, looks like a mid-double, real dark fish like they all are in here. It just shows you after a couple of days of, uh, well, a day and a half of not really fishing and zooming around from swim to swim, um, once you get it right, the rewards are there. Right, here we go. Put a bigger hook on after losing that last fish. I've got size four on now. And even with like a 14 mil boily, uh, they're still not bothering them. Come on, fella, in you come. There we go. Get in the net. Come on. Yes! Another one in the net, wicked. A perfect little common carp. Who cares how big they are when they look like this, eh? Sure it's gonna be big one day. I'm just sprinkling out a few more half baits after every fish and uh, they're straight back in on it. I didn't think I'd get this many bites to be honest and there's still quite a lot of hours of daylight left and all day tomorrow. So uh, let's hope we bag a big one. To another fish after just having an aborted take no more than 10 minutes ago and uh, feels like a nice one God, probably charging around hooking them in like probably two and a half foot of water and they're going mad at the start this is another one on the half and half hook bait uh, you know, well worth putting into your own fishing, half a pop-up and half a bottom bait. Just make it look like one boily, but keep that buoyancy on the top. It's a size four curve shank style hook as well. Onto uh, a 15 pound fluorocarbon hook link. And one of those leads that you pick up from the very centre. I fished this swim last night and um, I was obviously fishing in far too deep water. Um, I had them straight out in front of me, sort of dotted around the bay and um, they obviously wanted to be in the really shallow water so you can often be in the right swim but be fishing the wrong part of the right swim and not get any bites. Not a monster, it's only a double I think but properly powerful one. It looks like a 20 after all that. <coughs> 
Come on, fella. You are mine. Get in that net. Get in that net. Yeah! Got him. Wicked. And there he is, after that epic battle. 18 pounds of muscle pack mirror. This is the reason we come to Linear. Lovely carp like this one. He was absolutely nailed on that size four curve shank hook. I'm sure he's gonna get a lot bigger and make a lot of the anglers here very, very happy in the future. But for now, I'm well chuffed. Look at this absolute cracker. What a beautiful, heavily plated mirror cup. Sort of fish you'd see on the cover of a magazine when it's 40 pound, it's a stunner. I caught this fish on the old balanced uh, tiger nut rig that I've been using. And what I'd like to do now is get this one back in the pond and show you that rig in a bit of detail. So here is the balanced tiger nut rig. It's N-trap soft coated braid and I've stripped back about five centimeters to reveal the braid uh, inner. I then added a little bit of shrink tube. Uh, I've got a knotless knot and a loop of about two centimeters on there. So that's the basic rig. And to that, I'm going to add um, a balanced tiger nut setup. So what we need to do is pick out a tiger nut from our pot. And this first tiger nut is act, going to act as the bottom bait and it's going to sit beneath the cork inserted tiger nut. So pick a nice tiger nut, nice rounded one I like to go for, not too big. Um, you can chop and change the size of these though, potentially to, to critically balance your, your, your setup. And we thread that onto the hair. These tiger nuts are beautiful, they're all milked up when I pierce them with a needle, which is perfect. Thread that on and fit that just down over the knot of the loop in that hair. Something like that is perfect. It's quite important to try and get that knot to sit within the bottom tiger nut. What you don't want to have happen is that sliding down onto the hook. That's not a good situation for it to be. So you want that, that bottom nut to sit like that eventually. Something like that is perfect. So there's a little bit of play between the hook and the nut. So that's our bottom bait nut added. Now we have to pick the magic balance nut. There's a nice big tiger nut here on the top of the pot. So what I'm gonna do with this is drill it through. So I'm gonna core it out. Be a little bit careful with your fingers while you're doing this. And, and you wanna support, I find best to support the nut a bit while you're doing it so it doesn't split and, and not push too hard. And just gently work the, the, uh, the insides of the nut out. And you can see the bits, the flakes coming out there, beautiful stuff. Always put that back in the bucket, don't waste it. It's all fish food. Drill through. And then I tend to keep a finger on the back of the nut as I'm drilling it through. And when the needle starts to pierce the outer skin, I stop, just give it a little spin and pull it out. And that should reveal a nice clean hole right through the tiger. That's perfect. And then to that, what I'm going to do is add my little cork insert. Now, this is one I've made previously. I've cut it down already, but you can buy sections of cork tube uh, and, and fit those in and then cut them off at the appropriate length, but you should see that will fit in there. Absolutely treat. Now, how sneaky is that? So this nut now is gonna float on the surface of the pond if we were to drop it in. And in this situation, it's gonna give our rig buoyancy. So pierce it, be really careful there because it's quite hard to pierce through the, the nut and the cork. There it is, so I've gone down through the tiger nut, through the cork and out the other side. Gonna add that to the rig. Pull the loop up nice and steadily. There we go, so that's getting there now. So we need to add a, a, a hair stop in there to give it the right distance from the shank and slide it through the top of the loop and then pull it into position. Sometimes it can be quite difficult to get them in there. There we go, perfect. Okay, there we go. And I'll turn it around so you can see the cork, but that's the setup I'm after, something like that. Now, what, what we're trying to achieve, and when you test this in the margins, what you're looking for, in my experience, the perfect setup is a rig that doesn't sit up like that on the bottom. It doesn't sit like that, but it actually sits with a hook lying flat on the floor, but the nuts are just resting one above the other. Now, that is, in my experience, perfect. It doesn't look too suspicious. If a carp comes along and it's sitting like that, it's, why is there a tiger nut two or three centimetres off the bottom? That's not right. So you want it to sit flush to the bottom, but the beauty of having that section of cork in there, the reason I do that is it gives the bait a bit of buoyance and a bit of lift. So when the fish comes along, sucks up the bottom, 
that nut will come straight up off the bed of the lake into the fish's mouth and you can see the way that hook is hanging down. As soon as it goes into the fish's mouth, it's sitting there in the prone position straight over the bottom lip, bang, as the fish moves, it hits the bottom lip and, and, and penetrates the hook home. So that's what we're trying to achieve. Now, this rig is brilliant because, as I mentioned, I'm using it with tiger nuts, but you can also chop and change. So once you've got some of these tied up, um, I would think maybe, you know, if I'm in a situation and I'm fishing with boilie, uh, maybe using boilies like this, um, you could use a fish mill boilie on this setup just the same. And then maybe couple that up with a, um, a little pop-up, something like one of these, and fish that in a sort of similar style. So you've got a pop-up on top of a, an 18 mil bait there, and that should do the same thing. It's going to sit on the bottom of the lake in that similar way, but that pop-up just takes the weight out of the rig, so it's acting more like a natural bait. And I find that the, the snowman setup now is probably 90% of my fishing. It gives me you know, lots and lots of options for chopping and changing. You could always tip it off with a possibly uh, a bit of an orange uh, pop-up cut down or a white pop-up cut down, something like this fella here. One of these on the top, maybe chop one of these down and sit it on top of your bottom bait. And that, that's so you've got lots of flexibility with that rig. It's a, it's a great setup and it, I found it to catch fish wherever we go. So there we go. Hope that was interesting and maybe something you could try in your own fishing. Good luck. This is the rig that's been doing the business for me. It's very clean out there so I can get away with a very short hook link and the lead's not plummeting into any silt or anything like that. So that two ounce centre of gravity lead is working perfectly, makes hardly any splash and he's really hooking the fish. The bites are really ferocious. So to talk to you about the rig and how to tie it, because loads of people ask me this, it's made from fluorocarbon. You could use standard mono as well if you wanted to, but this is just stiff enough, so it pushes everything away from the lead and it reacts very quickly in the fish's mouth. We've seen from the underwater filming that as soon as this goes in, they just feel the hook straight away and they panic and they're off. And this is the actual rig that I caught the big plated on from St John's just across the road there, and that didn't like it at all. So first of all, you tie a whipping knot onto the shank of the hook and basically leave a big long tag end because that is going to be your hook link. Once you've done that, you slide on a micro rig swivel. And the reason I use that rather than a ring is it allows the bait to turn without the hook turning at the same time. And that means as the hook turns into the mouth to catch hold, it hasn't got to drag the bait with it to do so. And I think that just makes it turn that little bit more aggressively. So the swivel goes on next, then you just tie the knotless knot. Make sure you always come through the eye, the point side. That's so important. It makes the hook turn down and catch hold. If you had it out the other way, the hook would turn up away from the fish's mouth and you get loads of single beeps or you bump fish off within like 30 seconds of hooking them where you haven't got a proper hook hold. So that's so, so important on every rig. You must come through the point side of the eye. And then further down the rig, I've just pulled a small sinker onto there and then wrapped a bit of tungsten putty around it. And you see there, it's about halfway down. You don't want to go any closer to the hook than that. And again, from the underwater, we've seen if it's halfway or less, it pushes the whole rig out and everything lies nice and flat. If you put it right down close to the hook, what happens is the hook end sinks first and then you get a big loop of hook link up. So put it halfway down, maybe even a little bit less than that and just slide that down because it's round that sinker. That's about the distance. And then at the other end, it's just tied onto a link loop and it's tied with a four or five turn half blood knot. Very simple knot, probably the one you learned first when you started fishing. But the key to it is, once you've gone around and around and back through, is pull the tag end tight first. Pull it up as tight as you can and then tighten the knot. And what that does is it gives it a little bit of room to tighten. And can you see there, that hasn't kinked the line at all. So it's retained its breaking strain. And as we've said, centre of gravity lead. I use this in virtually all of my fishing now. It's either this or a helicopter rig for me. Helicopter rig if it's weedy, this if it's not. And then that's connected to a lead clip system and a rubber connector onto some tungsten tubing. And that being heavy and thick stops the whole thing tangling in the air. Now let's look at the hook bait in particular. This is what I'm using on this particular session. So it's half a pop-up and then half a bottom bait, and I've even shaved the top off the pop-up so that it looks like one of the half baits that I'm feeding. They make almost no splash half baits, and if I can either throw them in or catapult them into an area where the fish are already there, I think that's far better than putting whole boilies out. So I'm just imitating that, and when it goes down onto the bottom, because of that buoyancy, it's gonna sit round, so the hook's laying flat on the bottom, and the bait's just hovering above. And if that gets sucked in and doesn't hook them, and it's blown out again, it'll go back into exactly that same place. 
Now that's one option if you're going to match the hatch as it were, match the, what we're feeding. If you want to go contrasting, then I would go on to that. So a bright bit on the top, this is soaked in the almond liquid, and then a bottom bait, it's going to sit exactly the same on the bottom. Sometimes you find that that will do the business. When we're doing the underwater, Tom Dove caught all of his fish on that setup. Sometimes you'll find you need to match it, it really depends. So two options there, if you couple them with that rig, fishing on a nice clean bottom, you will get loads of bites. We're going to talk stalking hardware now, and uh, these, mate, are a thing of beauty. Um, they're three-piece, aren't they? That's right, Dan, yes. Yeah, so three three-foot sections, they're nine-foot rods. I have a pair of these with two small reels that live in a uh, soft little padded uh, holdal uh, with a fitting on the outside for taking a little landing net as well. So Right, very neat and you've tidy. Got, you've got the landing net to go with. So right. you, can tr you can literally lob them in the back of the car. So if I was fishing a venue like this and just coming up for odd afternoons and you only had limited time, come out yep. of the office at five o'clock, you don't have to worry about your kit being in the car, it's all tucked away. Right, Perfect. I'm guessing these are, are quite a through action then. Yeah, lovely rods. Um, I've, I've had fish to well over 40 pounds on them now. Have and, you? Uh, yeah, it wow. is, it's exciting stuff. They're, they're beautiful to, to, to stalk with, perfect. And um, you can also, if needs be, cast 50, 60 yards with them. So you've got a bit of flexibility. It doesn't mean, oh, it's a stalking rod, I can right. only fish 10 so metres. Why is it important to have a shorter rod if you're doing lots of stalking? Uh, for me, it's just the mobility, getting into spots, awkward little spots under trees. Right. It, it give, you know, I, I, I will stalk with a 12 foot rod, don't get me wrong. If situations yep. come up, then I'll use a 12 foot, you know, big, you know, one of so my. So if I rods. found fish under a tree at Welly and I've only got my big rods. Go for it. There's no point in going, oh, I can't stalk for those. You know, yeah. I, you know, and you just got to be careful. You know, often if I'm fishing a big pit and I'm travelling a, a lot, walking lots, I don't think, oh, I have to take extra rods because it's just heavy. Yeah. So I'd start with my 12 footers. But you know, if I just drop in on places like this, quick sessions, then these would be absolutely fantastic for it. And the real, uh, that looks like fluorocarbon on there. It is, yeah. A little bait runner loaded with fluorocarbon, uh, which I'd pin down, get everything on the bottom, really right. important. And, and strong gear as well, because right, you're okay. going to be fishing in tight swims. Right, OK. So that's that one. Let's have yeah. a look at this little fella, because this, oh. uh, this is a little cute. <laughs> the, the little puppy of the car <laughs> rod world. So that's a one piece, is it? Yeah, it is indeed, yeah. It's a lovely little rod. And if you if you give it a bit of a bend, so you imagine you've got a mid-20 on there. Go on, give it some stick. Bang, 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 bang. Oh, it looks like it's going to snap. And it feels like it's great when you're playing a good one on it. It feels like there's no rod in front of you, because it bends over, it disappears. Yeah. It looks like you've got this tiny little rod. Fantastic <laughs> fun. And I've had, I've had some quite nice fish on that. As well again in little holes little poke holes right and um, which you'd never really awkward to get in with a 12 foot rod but you can with that right um, again heavy gear heavy line you know, strong gear okay um, so um, and the other stuff you've got with you is that what you take when you when you go stalking yeah you, that's you're, right you're Dan. So if we ignore if we ignore the little one right um, I, I might carry a, a pair of these the nine footers yeah um, a landing net which is a two-piece landing net yeah um, and then a bucket of bits uh, and a little tackle box right uh, and travel light you know walk around one thing that's really apparent to us fishing here is yes. how nomadic the fish have been they? They, they are all over the place one minute they're over there then they're over here here. So right. if, you, if you're taking a bed chair and a bivvy and a table and all your cooking stuff, you're not going to move about. No. It, it, it's hot, you don't fancy moving. So I, I set my whole basis up as a short session, be very mobile. Um, and so that's pretty much it. The other really important piece of kit, which we touched on already, is the Polaroids and the cap. You know, so you, you can see the fish and you're on them all the time then. Okay. Well, that's how the master does it. <laughs> Scale everything down, keep mobile, and you'll be getting those fish from right out the edge. Well, what a day it's been, the hottest day of the year so far. Unfortunately, not so hot on the fishing front. We tried and tried again. Obviously, Simon opened up the day with a fish over there. Um, but, you know, we've been round and around and around. We found some fish in the edge right at the end. Thought it was going to happen. When I've wound in, it was hooked up on a little bit of weed and there was all bubbling over the top of it as well. But that's fishing at the end of the day. And now it's the end of the season, unfortunately. It's been a really good year this year on Thinking Tackle. It's been some fantastic guests, some brilliant fish caught. And obviously the guys that have been presenting for you have been absolutely exemplary as well. I hope you've learnt loads to put into your own fishing. I know I have. We'll see you next season. Season.